Trinary computing. Instead of the zeros and ones of binary, work with zeros, ones, and twos, or positive, neutral, and negative. Molecular computing. While the Intel i3 and i5 processors have 32 nanometer transistors, already thousands of times smaller than a skin cell, molecular computers use DNA or carbon molecules as transistors. These actually exist already. Quantum computing. Using single atoms as transistors, Quantum computers get fancy. At extremely, extremely low temperatures, atoms start to act strange, and instead of zeros and ones, atoms can represent zeros and ones at the same time. All of these types of computers are possible future additions or replacements to today's widespread binary world. However, the most practical and affordable version to add on today would be trinary. As I said earlier, Trinary works almost the same way as today's binary computers, just with three possible values instead of two. First, let's review binary. The binary number system is a base two number system in which the values of numbers are displayed with only two symbols, zeros and ones. A lot of people get scared at this point. How can the numbers 1, 3, 24, 106, and 2,093,359,831 be displayed with only two numbers? All you have to do is think of it like this. The way you thought of those exact numbers, like 24, 106, or 2 billion yada yada, was in a base 10 number system, more commonly called the decimal system. Deci means 10. We have 10 numbers that make up every number we think of. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 0. When you count up to a number past 9, you start a second digit. Because we learn the decimal system throughout our lives, it's easier for us to think of numbers that way. Binary works the same way, just with two digits instead of ten. Each digit in decimal is ten times as large as the digit to the right. One, ten, one hundred, one thousand. Then, you add up the numbers and you get the final answer. Here, it's 2000 plus 300 plus 60 plus 8 equals 2368. Each digit in binary is only two times as large as the digit to the right. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and so on and so forth. In the same way, you add up the numbers to get the final answer, only adding up where there is a 1. Here's 010101. How would you do this? You add up where there is a 1. A 1 in the 1's place equals 1, plus a 1 in the 4's place equals 4, plus a 1 in the 16's place equals 16, so 1 plus 4 plus 16 equals 21. Voila! You just add up the number of that digit if there's a 1, and don't add it up if there's a 0. That's it. That's how you add binary. Done. No hidden tricks. When you count past 9 in decimal form, you go to the next digit. When you count past 1 in binary form, you go to the next digit. One of the most confusing things to wrap your head around is the fact that 1 0 in binary is not the same as 1 0 in decimal. In decimal, 1 0 means a 0 in the 1's place plus a 1 in the 10's place equals 10. In binary, 1 0 means a 0 in the 1's place plus a 1 in the 2's place equals 2. So that's the basic system of binary. Now we get to trinary. Trinary mathematics, also called ternary mathematics, is a number system based on the power of three. Just as decimal has ten symbols and binary has two symbols, trinary has three symbols, zero, one, and two. Remember how each digit in binary is double the digit to its right? One, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two? In trinary, each digit is triple. One, three, nine, 27, 81. If it's a 0, you add up 0. If it's a 1, you add up the value of that digit, like 3, 27, or 81, just like binary. So, in trinary, what's 00011? The first digit's value is 1, and the second digit's value is 3, with zeros on the zeros, so you add up to 4. How about 10101? A 1 on the 1's place is 1, plus a 1 on the 9's place is 9, and 1 in the 81's place is 81, with zeros on the others, 
so it adds up to 91. It gets a bit more complex than binary, however, when there's a 2. If it's a 2, you add up double the value of that digit. Let's say you have 00020. Because the second digit's value is 3, 00020 means 6. 3 times 2 equals 6. How about 00201? Well, add up 1 plus 2 times the 9's place equals 18 equals 19. You can think of each digit as a cup. Each trinary cup can only hold two numbers before it spills over. As you add up the digits, when the number should go above 2, it actually just puts a number in the cup to the left and goes back to 0. It's the same in decimal. Whenever a decimal digit or cup has 9 but then needs to go up, it adds 1 to the digit to the left and returns to 0. Whenever a trinary cup goes above 2 instead of 9, but then needs to go up, it adds 1 to the next digit and returns to 0. The way you count up is like this. 0, 1, 2, because 1 times 2 equals 2, 3, because the second digit's value is 3, 4, because you add 1 from the first digit again, 5, because now you add 2 from the first digit again, 6, because the second digit's value is 3, times 2 equals 6, and on and on and on. For the record, one digit in trinary is called a trip, just as one digit in binary is called a bit. The bits in binary make up the megabytes and gigabytes you often see in file sizes. In the computer aspect, binary is the digitalization of information in the form of millions or even billions of zeros and ones. These zeros and ones in a computer represent on or off, high or low, physically tied to the voltage of pieces called transistors in your hard drive. Whenever the computer does anything, it involves the changing of these zeros and ones to correlate with new information. Computers running on this binary system have been extremely successful, making up practically every mass-produced computer system today. However, binary is horrible in terms of being compact. After one value, you have to move to the next digit. Trinary is better, where you can use two values before you have to make another digit. Therefore, you can save 50% more information in the same amount of hard drive space as with binary today. Decimal is way more compact. Nine different values can fit into the first digit. For example, here's one million in decimal, in trinary, at least in the system that we're using, and in binary. So, you'd ask, why can't we use decimal systems or even higher systems in computers to save storage? In regular math, it's perfectly fine. But in computers, physically making something with more than two or three possibilities is difficult. With binary, it's two possibilities, on or off. Electricity going through a transistor or no electricity going through, making it the easiest to manufacture. Trinary is actually much harder to make, but is still doable. Trinary, unlike molecular computers or quantum computers, would work on the same basis as binary. Instead of making transistors even smaller than they are now, which is proving to be pretty difficult, the idea of using trinary mathematics to run computers focuses on storing more information in similar sized transistors. Another point to make is that trinary in computers would probably not consist of zeros, ones, and twos but instead of zeros, positives, and negatives. It would be something like this because of the physical workings of transistors and electricity, but the math would be similar. So, now you know the math behind the great computers of today, binary, and the math possibly behind the greater computers of tomorrow, trinary.